Hey guys, what's up? It's Jax of The Legend here, and today I'm here with another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'll be showing you guys how to build an awesome copper slash drown farm in 1.17. So here we have where the spawner is. We have three blocks between the spawner and the roof, which would be roughly here. And then we have four blocks between the spawner and the ground. On the ground, we have where all of the zombies will spawn, get be spawned on and then pushed over. Once they're pushed over, they'll drop down then go up into the bubble column. Now that it's uh, night, you can see the zombies are spawning on your regular world. This will work at both day and night, just but because it's open um, to the roof, it has to be night for me. But in your world, it'll work all around the clock. But you can see once a zombie goes over to here, this fence allows it to be pushed up into this bubble column. Then it'll be pushed up. It'll go across like so, and then drop down. Now, if we go into spectator mode, just to fly up, you can see the zombie is slowly going down this water column. It appears useless until you're at the very end, where you'll see the zombie to actually start shaking. This means it has started its drowned conversion process, so it can be dropped out of the water. We have a few extra blocks just in case. Then it, once it's dropped, it'll convert into a drowned soon after. Let's just kill all of these drowned here so we can get a clear view of this. Of course you can add a collection system and I'll be showing you guys how to do that, but in this world I've got the bare bones of it. Let's wait for another zombie to spawn so we can see the full process. Oh wait, we've got one here. So it has started shaking. Once it drops out, it'll eventually turn into a drowned. Now this, the reason why this works at night and some drowned farms don't is because this drowned that's going to be down here, like we just saw, can't actually swim back up the water. A lot of drowned farms have the issue of the drowned swimming back up the water at night because drowned swim up at night and then that means that the farm gets clogged up. But this doesn't have that issue because the drowns get changed at the bottom when they're not near water at all. Now, here we have a fence here, and I've actually added a bit of lava below it, just to show you what this does. This here is a step up to this water bubble column for the zombies to take. I've got the lava down here, it isn't necessary, but if baby zombies do fall through the fence, which is likely going to happen, they burn instead of taking up the mob cap. Now, you don't have to do this if you're not worried about them taking up your mob cap, you can just have no lava there, um, but it's very simple to add. This fence can, this can either be a fence or a wall, now for this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to actually build it with a real spawner in a mine. So make sure you need to find one of those. It needs to be a zombie spawner. And you'll also need to grab these materials on your screen now. Okay, once you've got those, let's get building. So once you have cleared out your spawner like this, just by breaking the chest and placing a few torches, um, I suggest actually um, placing them on the ground to start with and then we're going to be moving them to the walls. We want to dig out four or well, two on each side so we have a total of four. If you have got a wall one block closer then dig out three but the main thing is you want four betw blocks between the spawner and the wall. For me it's two out on each side but it could be different for you. And here I'm actually just going to build a wall. Whatever block I want. Go in there. And we want to dig that out all the way up to the top of this spawner. You also want to make sure that there is a three block gap between your spawner and the roof. If there's more, place some blocks and if there's less, dig out some more. This is what it should look like. Now we're going to place these torches around the spawner onto the actual spawner itself. And then place some torches on the walls. These are so they don't get broken when we dig down. So we need to dig down so there's a four block gap between the spawner and the actual floor. So we want to dig one, two, three, four blocks down. We want to dig this right out. Now we've done this, we should have a big open area like this. Just to check what you're doing, I suggest grabbing out some blocks. I'm going to use concrete, um, two colors of concrete, so it's easier for you guys to see, but you can use any block you like. Make sure there is a four block gap between for each of the walls, etc. Oh, here you can see I've got a three block gap. That means I just have to shave this down one more. An issue like this won't actually break your farm, it will just make it less efficient. So if you don't have the space to do this, don't stress. Just make sure you light up outside of that wall, otherwise you can't have some spawning issues. So now I've got the spawning area, i just got to fill in this wall. So do that on all sides and double check that you've got it right. Once you've done that, it's time to add the water. Now, when we add the water, we are going to need to go 
right across with it like this. Now this is going to be on the opposite wall to the side where we want our killing chamber to be on. I want my killing chamber to be over in that corner over there. So I'm going to place it on this side. Oh, I haven't got this lit up very well over here. That's why a zombie just spawned. Kill this guy just quickly. Then when you've placed it, you should notice that it leaves a one block gap like this. If once you've got this, on this one block gap, dig two blocks down straight across. On the last two blocks, dig another two, one block. Place a water bucket at the end and it should flow down right over here to the very end. Now it's time to put in the column that'll raise up these zombies to let them fall down through the water. Dig two blocks in like this, too high, then place a wall here. Now this wall here is going to um, give the zombies a step up into the bubble column, so we'll place soul sand there. Now you will notice a few baby zombies fall through these cracks here. These will despawn after a little while, but if you're worried about it clogging up your mob cap, you can put lava underneath it. You can also use a fence here. But if you do want to have lava below the fence, make sure to use a nether fence, otherwise the fence will burn and will break your farm. Now that you've done that, dig up another block like this, and then break, place two signs like so. Then on top of these signs come up 20 blocks with iron bars like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You can fill in this hole. This doesn't have to be open here at all. That. Do the same on the inside, but just break these blocks instead of placing iron bars. Just break them all the way up to the top of the iron bars. This is what you should have. Now we're going to be using some scaffolding. I'm going to be flying, but you're going to be using some scaffolding to come right up to the top here and then dig three blocks across. One, two, three. Now that you've got that, you want to dig 18 blocks down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Making sure that you have scaffolding because otherwise you're not going to be able to get back up. Now that you've done that, you can come to the bottom of, back down to the bottom of this soul sand and go through and slowly place up water to create this bubble column. The easiest way to, is just to sit here with a bunch of water buckets and go up. Or you can use kelp, but if you don't have kelp, you can do this. This is my favorite way of doing it because it's a bit fun as well and it gives you a ride to the top. You actually also want to place one up here, leaving a gap there. So skip this block and place water there and it'll flow across like this. Then you want to extend this flow out just by placing a block there and then breaking it. Now that we've done this, we can't actually get out through here. So we're going to dig one block across like this, then dig another block like that. Then block up behind us and then dig another 18 down. I wasn't counting. That's very terrible. Make sure you count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So when you dig across, you should, be, you should meet up with this here. But we want to be below that because this is going to be leading into our killing chamber. So we need to dig another three blocks down. One, two, three. Then when we dig across, we will actually be under it. Now you want to break this block here and replace it with a sign. Now under this sign, dig out one more block like this and then dig that two blocks back like so. And then just dig out a small area like this. Your hopper is going to be going where this block here is if you want a collection system. But if not, you can just go ahead and place a slab right there. So you can crouch under and whack the zombies. Then you want to fill in these blocks here and move a torch. But if you do want a collection system, replace that block there with a hopper. With a hopper. This going down into the ground. Then replace these two blocks here. Might be easiest to break this slab with a chest. Like that. Super easy. Of course, you can extend this um, collection system if you want to, but this is plenty for me. I'm going to get this slab back. Now we want to make sure we've cleared out an area like this for a ladder or a room. Um, I've cleared out this two block area so I can get back to my zombie spawner. 
Now, if we go up here, you can see we can connect back to our hole like this, where this hole was. Now down here in this tunnel, we actually wanna make sure all of these water blocks are source blocks. So like I mentioned before, you can just do this by going up or you can place some kelp at the bottom to convert it all. My, I think the easiest way is just to go up slowly like this rather than place some blocks and get kelp because it uses less materials in a way. Once we're at the top like this, we're good to go. The reason why we need this is because when they are source blocks, the zombies just peacefully slow it down slowly. But if it's running and pushing them down, they go down faster which means that they have less time to try and convert into drowns, which will uh, mess up the farm. Now that we've got this, we need to get back into the spawner. Now my favorite way of doing this is to come across three like this, down 18, three, eight, three across towards our spawner. You can see which way that is by looking at the water. So three across, down 18, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Then we want to come across five, one, two, three, four, five, then in like this, two blocks. And boom, we're at our spawner. Because now it is time to break these torches. Now in survival, I suggest um, bringing some scaffolding so you can reach all of the high places and you can make a little bridge like this. I suggest breaking the tricky one first, like the ones around the spawner and then going for the easy ones. If you are worried about dying, you can either suit up and get a golden apple or you can just sleep nearby and just go in naked. And if you die, you die because you didn't have anything that important. And now we have a working farm where we can get drowned. Now this has just started, so we're not gonna have loads of drowned just yet. But while we're waiting, I um, just thought I'd mention that a great way to spruce up this farm is to replace these blocks here with glass so you can see the drowned slowly coming down. Now remember that um, if you are, be careful with what blocks you are replacing with glass because you don't want to let any light into the farm itself. These water column blocks here are fine to replace with regular glass, but anything too close to the farm, you want to use tinted glass. As well as that, making the room bigger, of course, will make it look a bit nicer, but you don't have to. It's a great thing about this farm. Now I've got a regular sword and I've also hopped into survival so you guys can see the XP I get from this. So, of course, the XP will be best when you have a looting sword, as well as the drop. So, I suggest my favorite enchantment for this sort of farm. Uh, I'm breaking three and mending, of course. Those are must-haves. Then sharpness, looting three, and even fire aspect to make the killing a bit faster. But remember, you don't want to kill the zombies as soon as they drop down because they need to convert into drowns. Like this. Once they're converted into drowns, you can have a whack at them. Now, if you do stand too close to this farm, like right up like this, there is a small chance that they can hit you. But if you stand a bit further back, not even a full block, they have no chance. So I've AFK'd here for a short while, like not even five minutes. And you can see we've already got loads of drowns. So if I just um, whack, start whacking them, you see my XP levels are going up super fast now that I've got a better sword with looting three. And I already got two copper ingots in my inventory, not to mention the one that I've got in here. There's still loads of drowned in here. It's crazy. There's another copper ingot. Look at that. So you can imagine, if you AFK here overnight, just by setting up an auto clicker, or even if you just AFK here for an hour while you're watching Netflix or something, you can get loads of copper. And look at that. I already have 12 copper. So now you guys know how to build an awesome copper farm. So that's going to be the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and remember to subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys later. And remember, stay carbonated.